Up until now, all of our programming has been very sequential. That is, we enter our program statements one at a time, and they are executed in sequence, step one, step two, step three, and so on. Basic default sequential processing is the hallmark of the idea of an algorithm. Another characteristic of what we might think of as basic algorithmic processing is the ability to repeat a process. And repeating a process is something that we call iteration. There are a number of types of iteration that we can construct, but the easiest one is known as definite iteration. Definite iteration is where we repeat a process and we know the number of times that repetition is going to occur. In Python, the easiest way to create a definite iteration is to use the for statement and combine it with what's called the range function. Now the for statement is known as a sequence iterator. What that means is that it can execute a group of statements one time for each item in a sequence object. The easiest way to create a sequence object is to use the range function and that's where we will begin. The range function creates or produces as its result a sequence of integers. So, for example, if we wanted to create a sequence of 10 integers, we could call the range function and pass it the integer 10 as an argument or as its parameter. When we evaluate, when we hit return, the Python environment returns to us the fact that range 10 returns a range object and the range object requires some explanation. What this means is that we've created a sequence of integers starting at 0 and going up to but not including 10. So basically from 0 to 9 and if you think about it there are 10 digits 0 to 9. If we want to make this easier, we can ask the Python interpreter to supply us with a different representation of the range object. We can ask it to give us a list representation for the result of asking for a range of the first 10 integers. If I do that, then we can see a much more detailed representation of the resulting sequence and you can see it starts at 0 and goes up to but does not include 10 but there are 10 integers in that sequence. Likewise if I wanted to do the same thing say to create the first 15 integers I could do range 15 again this creates a range object a sequence of integers starting at 0 up to but not including 15 but if I want that to be easier to see I can ask for it to be shown as a list and we can see the result has 15 integers 0 in this case through 14. So the most simple range object that we can create is a range that by default starts at 0 and goes up to but does not include the bound that we provide. The second kind of range object that we can create has both a starting point and a stopping point. So for example I could say let's create a range starting at 5 and going up to but not including 10. Again what we get re what, what is returned is this range object which has the bounds in it but if we want to see the details again we can ask for it to be shown as a list and you can see that this is now a sequence of integers starting at 5 and going up to but not including 10. So in this particular case the range object 5 comma 10 has 5 integers 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now the third variation on the range function is to supply a starting point a stopping point and also an increment. 
So for example, range 1, 10, 2, again, returns a range object, but what it really returns is a range of integers starting at 1, going up to but not including 10, but incrementing by 2 each time. Again, if I look at this as a list of values, I can see that this sequence object now contains 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. If I would have gone to the next value in the sequence, 11, because 11 is greater than 10, that's beyond the upper bound. Remember, we go up to but never include the upper bound, and so anything 10 and greater is going to be the stopping point. Now I can do the same thing, and this time go 1, up to but not including 10, by 3. And we can see we get 1, 4, 7. The next value would have been 10, but of course we never include the upper bound of 10. And again I could say 1 to 10 by 4, and in this case starting at 1, adding 4 each time, going up to but not including 10, and so 9 is the highest value in the sequence. So the basic form of the range function is to supply a starting point, an ending bound, and an increment. By default, the starting point is 0 and the increment is 1. You can then supply any kind of variation that you want to produce the sequence object that you desire. One final thing for you to realize is that we can also create the sequence in a descending order. So for example, just using the list representation, I can say let's go starting at 10, working our way back down to 1 by negative 1. If I do that, notice that the starting point is 10, the increment is now negative 1, so we go from 10 to 9 to 8 to 7 and so on, but when we get to 2 we stop because the next value would be 1 and we never include the bound. So starting at 10, going down to but not including 1 by negative 1 each time. And likewise, I could do this starting at 10, going to 1 by negative 2. And we can see then 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. The next value would have been 0, but 0 is beyond 1. 1 is the bound which is never included, and anything beyond that is not included, and so we end up with those five integers. So depending on whether we have positive or negative increments, in a sense, the step that we take, we can have sequences that go in ascending order or sequences that go in descending order.